Okay, so let's talk about deactivation. So deactivation, um, you can see the first setting we have here is start deactivated. So you can play and you can see, oh, that starts deactivated and it doesn't do anything, which that's exactly what you would want if you check that button. However, you notice there is no animate button. You can't animate this. And the first time I saw this, I thought this was so ridiculous. Why can't I animate uh, the start deactivated? Because maybe, maybe I want it to start deactivated and then at a certain point in time, I want it to be activated. But I wasn't able to do that. Now I can uh, hover my mouse over here and press I. If you try to hover your mouse over here and press I, it just gives you an error. But if I hover my mouse over here and press I, then I can, um, you know, animate this to where it's unchecked and then it's checked. Uh, or I, sh I guess it would be start deactivated, so it would have to be checked first and then unchecked, and then you can add another keyframe. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear those keyframes there. But I thought, why do that when we already have something up here? So if I just uncheck that for now, we've got this dynamic, which we sort of went over before. But let me just show you what I mean by it. So I'm going to duplicate this uh, on the Z axis and go up. Oh, uh, we are using... Actually, I don't know why it's doing that. I'm going to just delete that. Uh, oh, because we're at 95 here. Let's go back to frame one. Let's try that again. Duplicate on the Z up. So right about there, I think that's good. Now if I press play, they both fall and they both collide just like they're supposed to. But if I select this one and then uncheck dynamic, um, you can see then that bounces off there just like that. And you can see the bottom one doesn't move and the top one just falls and bounces off of that. Um, so initially what uh, I would do is um, just animate this. So you got this little button here. This can be animated. Uh, so I would just go all the way to um, right before it touches. So let's uh, zoom in here. So up until here, we want it to be deactivated. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that unchecked and then animate the property by clicking that button and then just go one frame forward. Uh, well, let's bake that cache in here again. So let's go that back here and then one frame forward and then let's check this and then click that button again to make another keyframe and then let's see what happens here. Boom. Okay. So now we have the top cylinder hitting the bottom one and as it hits it, it activates the bottom one and the bottom one falls. Uh, we can even play around with these keyframes by uh, just maybe making them start a little bit sooner and then you have something that maybe looks like that. So that is one way you can do it, and I thought, well, if we can do it up here, why do we need this deactivation down here? Oh, well, I'll show you. So I'm going to right-click here, clear keyframes. We're going to go back to frame one. Let's scroll all the way down here and check deactivation again, and check start deactivated. So now let's press play, and you can see, oh, look at that. It starts deactivated, and it actually does it itself. You don't need the animation button here because once something collides with this, then it will animate that physics automatically, which is really super nice. And now I don't have to worry about uh, animating that property if I wanted it to come in a little bit earlier, a little bit later, or just, uh, you know, just go based on um, the distance between the objects. So it will act accordingly like that. So that is pretty cool. I really like that. Um, okay, so then what is this velocity linear and angular? So if you hover your mouse over it, it says below which simulation stops simulating the object. Basically at what speed or what velocity you want the simulation to stop. So that means higher values here means the simulation is going to stop sooner. So if I select this one and let's do the same thing here. It's that and we don't want to start deactivated on this one but let's crank this one up to 100 not 10 100 some crazy amount here and then simulate our physics object and then i'm also going to crank up the angular velocity as well uh, both to 100 feet per second so let's see what happens there you can see all right our physics stopped our simulation for this one stopped at a really weird angle. And that's because it slowed down for both the movement, the linear and the angular velocity, uh, below, it fell below 100 feet per second. So let's just do something crazy again here just to 
demonstrate that 200 feet per second let's see uh, what that looks like all right and so it stops sooner and you can stop it even sooner let's say 500 feet per second I don't know how it's gonna yep, there you go so um, it's and that actually may not be let's uh, if you ever want to like refresh your cache down here uh, for the physics or just if something's not working right um, just go ahead and start changing something like move it or pretend like you're gonna move it and then right click uh, to cancel that and then try that again um, and then sh it should clear that cache down there um, definitely if you move something doo -doo, and you can see and if I click uh, off on the one object to the other now you can see that's this is yellow that means this cache is out of date um, so once you run the simulation it's gonna start the cache over linear and angular velocity deactivation will also help with jitter so you can see um, when we uh, let's just um, let's just uh, start that one deactivated and just focus on this one here so if we just come here and make sure that that's unchecked and then play our animation all right so now here you can see it's kind of flickering it's because it's jittering so um, we got a bit of a jitter right here but if we crank this up oh, let's just do 10 and 10 I think that'll be enough um, that's when we stop the simulation so simulation is coming here and we're doing good and then it rolls and it starts here and then it's you can see it's flickering but then it stops right here so our cache is till 250 but uh, it deactivates right about here because you can see it's no longer flickering it's no longer jittering it's slowed down enough to where the velocity is less than 10 feet per second so that's a good thing to remember if you have resting objects that are supposed to be resting but they're jittering come down here to your velocity and mess with these settings um, and see if that produces any better results all right so we got a few more settings to go over before we start multiplying this by a thousand to make a thousand of these fall into a pile so stay tuned and you'll see me over there